is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two. Welcome to DBL. It is Tuesday, September 29th. I'm Tori here with the brother I never asked for, Jeffrey. And Lindsay joins us from home. <laughs> Starting off real spicy. Can I be the sister from another mister? <laughs> What's are, going on? You are a sister from another <laughs> mister, but I wanted you. I didn't want this one. I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> starting off strong. I'm just going to let it, I'm going to let it go because we're, nice, our first Tori. story is about politics. <laughs> I'll save it. Okay. I'll channel the anger towards you. I can't wait. Here we go. Well, everybody's talking about it. Let's get straight, straight to it. The big presidential debate is tonight. Let's get ready to rumble. Isn't that what they say? You're not getting any backup over here. And before we even get into it, <laughs> we want to know what you think, DBL Nation. Who's going to win, Joe Biden or President Trump? So we want you to go to dblvote.com. We want you to tell us what you think. The debate kicks off in Cleveland at 9 p.m. Eastern, and a new poll is saying just 14% of voters have yet to decide who they're voting for. Now, the two candidates have reportedly taken different approaches to prepping for tonight, I'm not surprised. The president is not doing traditional debate prep. Instead, he's just gonna rely on his experience in office, saying he doesn't wanna overdo it. On the other side, Joe Biden has been practicing with his team by doing mock standoffs, and I personally know he has had psychological profilers try and help him prep as well. Now, Chris Wallace from Fox News is moderating, and interestingly enough, he will not be fact-checking either candidate. And did you know you can actually bet on tonight's debate? Wow, look at where we are. Some of the bets you can place include, will either candidate wear a mask on stage? Will the president say fake news or China more? China. And will the candidates greet each other with a fist bump, an elbow bump, or nothing at all? Brilliant. My, my first bet is going nothing at all. Nothing at all. Yeah. And I don't think Trump will wear yeah, a mask. Nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. Yeah, that's, that, that's a lock. That's, that's a lock. lock. I'm going to put that one down. Uh, I want to know, Lindsay, what you think the strategy will be for both Biden and Trump. I have my own theory. I want to hear from both of you. Linz, what's your take? Well, I think President Trump is going to stick to uh, what he usually does, which is show up and just kind of go directly smack at whoever his opponent is. And I think if Joe Biden has to come up with a strategy that's his own, he can fall into that trap of trying to meet him there. And then I don't know that Joe Biden is strong enough to meet him there in that space and debate really well. There's so many things to talk about. Joe Biden may have to answer for his crime bill of 1994. Um, President Trump may have to answer for what happened with his coronavirus response. And both of them really need to answer for how they're going to move forward protecting black and brown bodies in my opinion, in this country. So I think that there's a lot to discuss, and I hope we don't get lost in right. the let's get ready to rumble right. portion of this and just constantly fight and throw jabs, calling them nicknames and names that end up lasting throughout the campaign. A lot of people are tuning in and mail-in voting, so I think people really might be making their decision based off of tonight. I know there's not a large number of people, you said, who already 14, don't know where right. they stand, but I think this debate is going to be really important for those people who are somewhere in the middle that are mail-in voting. Absolutely, especially Ohio, Iowa, Pennsylvania. What do you think is the strategy Ooh, there's so much to unpack here unfortunately Lindsay I, I think we're gonna get into that you know name calling mud slinging back and forth I think it's a good strategy we were talking about this before oddly enough this is what our life has come to we're That's talking about sad. politics casually in our, I'm so proud in, our, of you. in our off time no but I am I'm very excited about tonight's debate I am and I've never said that in my whole life I think it's very interesting we say only 14 <laughs> percent but I think a 10 percent swing in any direction wins the election mm. right so if Trump comes out I do not like that he's saying you know, four years in office gives me enough. You practice like you play, and I firmly believe that. And if you don't know what's coming, he's gonna might be the one stumbling up there. But but again, I say this all the time, and I'm not trying to make fun of Joe Biden. I thought, if you remember, Tori, Hillary falling down before she got in that car. She's gonna stumble. I should have yep. brought up this point so we had the visual of it. But if you guys remember uh, four years ago, Hillary stumbled, couldn't get in the car, and I think that showed a sign of weakness, mm. which a lot of people, it might have shifted the votes. I don't know. I don't know politics that well. But if Joe displays any type of that behavior tonight, it's not gonna be good for Joe Biden. So I'm very excited about this. You said, let's get ready to rumble. I, I feel like this is a prize fight tonight. I, like, and there's betting on it and everything. I know, you're so excited. <laughs> 
I know. <laughs> it's like pay-per-view. My quick take is from The Atlantic. I just want to say an, uh, an article that the psycho psychologist said, the best thing to do to get under President Trump's skin is to A, call him Donald, and B, bring up a very innocuous lie in the beginning. Like he said, I lived on the 68th floor of Trump Tower, right? Well, there's only 50 floors at one point. So every time he lies, simply say, oh, we're on the Donald, we're on the 68th floor again, and move on. Stay calm and just brand the lie. And I think that's a really smart move. But how would Joe know what's a lie or not? I think they're pretty obvious, in my opinion. Well, I, I wouldn't know the 68th floor. If someone's like, I live on the good for you. Well, you would know if there's 50 floors in the <laughs> building you're on. It's in the elevator. How do I know how many floors are in the Trump building? You own it. It's Trump I think Tori, they're going to use that strategy, and he's going to point out a lie. It has to be something that everybody, like Jeff and I, would understand. Yeah, Otherwise, no, I think no, that the voters and people watching are going like to be like, this. "No, it's an innocuous lie that didn't need to happen." And <laughs> Lindsay's he on my side. What your point you just made, you got overruled. No, I didn't. Your point stunk. <laughs> the megaphone says, uh, "Wow, so Tori, you started off wrong the, this morning." The debates are the <laughs> debates are on right now. You can start bet. it now. Take, place your bets, me or Tori. That's right. Oh okay, God, I lost. It's I definitely going to be Jeff. Um, Sixty-two percent. If we could bring up the megaphone again, I just want to say, say Joe will win, and thirty-eight percent of you say Donald Trump. Again, that's the same thirty-eight base. That's his base. That number. And if you get that 10, 14 percent swing, then what? All right, exactly. Let us know uh, if you will be watching, tuning in. Well, after tonight's debate, head on over to our. DVL Instagram because Lindsay and I will be doing a live post debate wrap up with our thoughts and analysis on the debate on Instagram live. It's going to be so much fun and Jeff won't. Could I, could I make an there. appearance? No. Why not? All right, you're welcome to join. <laughs> I definitely will not be joining. All right, we've got to talk about this. This video is crazy. It's about uh, President Trump's former campaign manager, Brad Parscale, who found himself in some trouble. Let me tell you the story here. So police just released this body cam footage from an incident at his Florida home. His wife reportedly, this is she, called the police Candace after she heard a gunshot. You can see her there in a bikini and towel talking to the cops. They find Parscale on the front porch shirtless, holding a beer, fly down, and he doesn't comply with an order to get on the ground. Now that's when, boom, police took him down with force. Parscale was involuntarily committed at a Florida hospital using the Baker Act. The Trump campaign released a statement saying in part that Parscale is, quote, a member of our family and we all love him. Just a shocking video to see of someone who is so high up. There is some allegations that he might have taken some money. Again, embezzlement from the campaign. Again, that's all alleged. But his wife called with bruises on her arm and said, he said, I'm going to hurt myself and cocked a gun several times. And they actually used the Florida red flag law that came into place after Parkland because he had 10 firearms in the house. Jeff, what did you think of when you saw this? I think the one thing that sticks out the most to me, Tori, not, you know, ignoring the rest the video is his mental health. I think that's what we have to check on. These people who own 10 guns, these people who act out, this isn't normal behavior, right, right? right? So we have to go to mental health, but immediately when you see this story, people are gonna go to, oh, this guy's a Trump guy, look at what an idiot he is, he doesn't follow the rules, Now, and then it just gets into a mudslinging match. When we're talking about, men, I see mental health here, mm. and that's what I look at, and I, and I'm, you know, I'm just gonna leave it there because I don't want it to get in something that it's not, but that's what jumps off the and, and to be me. honest with you, they took him into hospitalization using the Baker Act involuntarily because of his mental health. I think the red flag laws actually worked here, and I'm excited to see that they were enacted after Parkland. Lindsay, what did you think about that video? Yeah, I just thought it was crazy. I think the same thing. I don't want to bash somebody while they're going through all that, so I think that they really need to just uh, take his mental health seriously and figure out what their next steps are. I'm, I'm glad that the okay. Democrats didn't jump on board and start to bash and jump right. on the train of like, you know, what, what Jeff was just saying, that President Trump's team is all out of whack. So I'm, I just hope that they get better. Yeah, and again, the Miami Herald is the one saying uh, cops saw bruises on her arm, his wife, and she did say he has hit her in the past. Again, this is a big mess, and we don't want to get into all of that, but we want to make sure you hear the whole story from us. Well, moving on to happier news, we want to give a big DBL shout out to the Tampa Bay Lightning. <laughs> Good sound they effect, Schroeder. They won the Stanley Cup last night, becoming the first team to win a championship since the pandemic began. And there's one more sports story we want to mention. At last night's Monday Night Football game, the ESPN announcer found himself in some hot water after he repeatedly referred to the Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes as Pat. Patrick's mother tweeted about it, saying, if this announcer doesn't stop calling my son Pat, ugh, I may scream, LOL, hashtag, help. Jeff, is that like someone calling you Jeffy? 
I don't know if I'd tweet about it if someone kept calling me Jeffy. Well, it bothers some people. Like, I'm not a, vi I'm a Victoria, just so you guys all know. And if you call me Vicky, I will not respond to you. I have way bigger things in life. If someone calls me Jeffy, I even, you know, answer to curse words, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Lindsay, does it bother you? I think if somebody's mama jumps in and says their opinion, you need to listen to mom and start calling that man by his full name, okay? That's what you need to do. And I think that's the end of the conversation, right? <laughs> if the mama says, you listen to mama and there is no, so whatever mama wants, I agree with mama. Everything mama says is allowed. Now the announcer also said he felt, is this right? He felt bad because his name, he apologized, his name is often mispronounced. So I appreciate that on someone. I appreciate when someone gets my name right. I really do. So wait, you get mad when people call you what? The, Vicky or Troy, I get a lot of Troy. Troy? Because Tori, they moved Troy. Yeah. That's... Stop laughing. I, I get more annoyed when people misspell my name in an email. I'm like, it's right there. It's in the right title of there. The, I email. Met, yeah. Or it ends with an I. It's a Y. It says it right there. You know, and now this is going to be a little petty, but like when you know, go to, you go to get a coffee and someone's like, what's your name? I'm like, Jeff. They're like, with a G? I'm like, what do you think? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm my so Gia. I have G Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Gia. Coming up on GB Hope. Toys R Us Jeff has a G. G E O F F. Those fancy guys, Jeff. They, fancy Jeff. They're very fancy. Yes. And they don't and like I do you not right look now. like a fancy Jeff. Not at all. Jane Lynch is putting a new spin on oh. an old show. Oh, she, Troy. <laughs> she tells me how she's making Weakest Link her own. And guys, Carol Baskin is hanging up her dancing shoes. Oh, my God. What's next for the Tiger King star? And as we go to break, we want to thank our coworkers for producing the show from home. What a miracle. We'll be right back. Welcome back to DBL. Well, the claws came out for Carol Baskin on Dancing with the Stars last night. The Tiger King star danced the samba to Simba from the Circle of Life from the Lion King. But the judges were not impressed with her lack of energy, with one giving her a 3 out of 10. Today on GMA, Carol reacted to being booted from the show. Watch. Your husband, he was not happy about it. He just flat out was not having it. So what did he text you? Well, he texted me to say that he thought Bruno was on his list above the Tiger King producers as far as being unnecessarily cruel. 
I'm totally scared of Carol Baskin. I'm not going to even lie. Um, was she there for the ratings? Did she deserve to go home? Lindsay, were you Baskin in the Carol Baskin? Thank you. Oh, that's that's a good one. <laughs> um, I, I think that she... I mean, I thought they were going to leave her on the show for a long time. I mean, Tiger King was probably, if not the most popular random series that we all didn't know we needed this year. So I thought she was going to be on there close to the end. But if you can't dance that well, you can't dance that well. <laughs> it is what it is. She got booted off. And the, but fair is fair. Yeah. Now she has to worry about the other family that thinks that she killed her former husband or whatever you describe that story as allegedly. Yeah. And they're sending cadaver dogs uh, out to, by the way, a lake house that she has. I've been researching and spending time on the story uh, and I will update you as to that. Jeff, were you surprised she went so early on a reality show? You need the villain, don't you? I think they ran out of tiger songs, so there's nothing left for her to do there. They used up the two big ones. I am woman, a hear me roar. <laughs> That's about right. So they're like, they took a, a dance with the stars. Like, Jeff was not that? giving you no, any slack today. <laughs> no, I'm not giving her any support. She started off on the, on the wrong foot. I started from the bottom and now I'm still at the bottom. Is that what's happening here? You think this is the last we'll see of Carol Baskin? Now she's off the show. And I don't know how much you... No way. I don't know how you find somebody when you feed them to a lion, allegedly. Tigers, first of all. Or a tiger. <laughs> big, big cat. Um, I think you found scent of human remains is what they're From saying. From 30 they're years ago? Is that possible? Cadaver dogs, that's what they're looking at the lake house. From your, your research in cadaver we'll dogs? We'll see. I'm researching them. Coming up on DVL, <laughs> actress Jane Lynch remembers her beloved Glee star, the late Naya Rivera, the memories that will last a lifetime. Don't go away. Welcome back to DBL. My favorite, Jane Lynch, is known for slinging insults on Glee, but now she's doing it at the new host of Weakest Link. Earlier, she told me why she was nervous to take on this new gig, and she took a moment to remember her late Glee co-star, Naya Rivera. That's today's Chatting with the Stars. <laughs> Welcome back, Jane Lynch, my Shiro, my role model in life to Daily Blast Live. I'm excited to talk to you about The Weakest Link. But first, we know you rocked a tracksuit really well. We do know that. So tell us, Jane, have you busted out the tracksuit for quarantine, or is it sweatpants like me and the rest of us? I, you know, I only have one tracksuit left. I've given them all away because I'm a giver. Um, so, and I don't wear it anymore because uh, they're made of polyester, so they're, they're not fun to wear. But I've been wearing a lot of sweatpants. Yeah. I'm wearing pajama pants right now Let with slippers. Ooh, look at that. Oof, it Gorgeous. showed you the bottom of my slippers. That's not good. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, did they, so they let you keep the tracksuit. Did they let you keep the megaphone? One of our viewers wanted to know. I don't want a megaphone, no. <laughs> I didn't even ask for it. What am I gonna do with a megaphone? 
It's a good call. I got a loud voice. I don't need a microphone. You, you can project. You're absolutely right. Uh, switching gears here. Speaking of Glee, it is absolutely. hard uh, not to bring up your former co-star, Naya Rivera. I'm sure I know you've been asked mm -hmm. about her a lot, and so I want to be very sensitive here, but is there something you yeah. haven't shared about her yet, or a memory, or just a feeling you had from set that you'd like to remember her by? Hey, are you okay, Annie? You've been hit by. You've been struck by. A smooth criminal. Yeah, I, I, you know, I know a lot of people knew she was fiery and, um, you know, a really big presence and a force of nature, but she was the, she was the most loyal friend you would ever have. Wow. Um, she was absolutely protective. If, if you were her friend, like yeah. my, my niece Megan, who was a good friend of hers, if you were her friend, you felt it wow. and you knew it and you knew someone always had your back. Wow. So a lot, you know, a lot of people are hurting right now, especially our Glee family. Yeah, you guys, you guys have had it rough. I'm glad that you are a family sticking together because I know what that's like in theater when you have a group. Yeah. It helps when tragedy strikes. So I'm happy mm -hmm. for you on that. Um, switching gears completely to the weakest link. <laughs> the original show is iconic for many reasons, but the host yes. was a big part of that. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. So was Jane Lynch nervous to fill her shoes? I mean, tell me, really, for real. It's time to vote off the weakest link. Well, I tried not to think about that, Tori, you know, because I, I always try to avoid subjects that are going to fill me with anxiety. Totally. So I didn't think too much about it. I, I, I knew I would find my way. So... What made you think Einstein was the African-American astrophysicist? <laughs> I knew I would find my own way, so I didn't want to put a... Um, uh, you know, she certainly inspired uh, how, how I host the show, but um, I'd be foolish to try to imitate her. So I, I kept that at bay, all those thoughts at bay, I would dismiss them immediately. And I think I ended up doing just fine. How do you dismiss that? I'm in a lot of therapy and I've spent a lot of money trying to figure that out. How do you dismiss yeah. the anxious thoughts so easily? Or is it a lot of practice? Uh, I don't know that it's, well, I guess it's a lot of practice in the beginning because you have to break an old habit. I'm getting really deep with you right now because yeah, our, 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 our self-doubt and, you know, and, and, and all those sabotaging thoughts are, are, are in there. Ooh, look what I just did with my hair. Are in there really deeply and they're almost like on a record player. They're like yeah. deeply uh, deep grooves and you have to figure a way how to get the needle out of there. And sometimes that just takes a lot of conscious work. But once you do it, it really is clear sailing. Yeah, you look you know? free. You look free. You're what I want to look like on my after picture. It's very, very happy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are the weakest link. Goodbye. So you've kind of become my therapist. I really appreciate taking the time. I will pay you $150 <laughs> after. Good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> totally appreciative. Thank you, Jane Lynch, for being my Shiro, for joining us again on Daily Blast Live. It's always a pleasure to talk oh. to you. Seriously, the weakest link premieres on NBC Thank you. 2. Night people, get there. Appointment TV. We'll be right back. Thanks, Jane. Promotional consideration is brought to you by. We've all got.
Welcome back to DBL. The average American household spends $550 a month on groceries. So what's the best way to cut back? It all comes down to your list. We're chatting about it on today's Bang for Your Buck, presented by the Hartford. So building a better grocery list is key to saving money. Organize your items in the same order that you'd shop for them in the store. Second, sale items should dictate your list. For example, if chicken's on sale this week, stock up for a couple of dinners. If juice is buy one, get one, take advantage. Lastly, keep a coupon file, because you're cool with the coupon file. Every week, go online or check the Sunday ads to see what's on sale at which stores, and literally clip all the coupons you're interested in. When it comes to money, the Hartford Financial is here to help, whether it's home, life, or business insurance, the buck got your back. Call 1-800-684-6085 or visit thehartford.com to learn more. Um, good, good. I, I need to cut back. I'm a Costco guy and I go crazy. I think you're overcosting yourself at Costco. I go so much. I told you the story that I checked out. Like when oh, you, you leave with the, the receipt, I'm like, so you have to see the guy and I notice him every single week. Every week I go. So he saw me. He's like, hey, what's up? And I was like, hey, what's going on, man? And he, I gave him my receipt and he's like, I'm like, I'm here every week. We're we starting to know each other. He goes, but you're also on a show, right? He goes, that's why I said hi to you. I go, oh yeah, I'm on a show too, but good seeing you, I'll see you next week. He thought he was just your Costco friend, so sad. Sorry, DBL is new every day, we'll see you same time, same place tomorrow, bye guys.